Welcome back to Geeks Are Sexy. We're here for our panel discussion. Everyone's taking a little time to get themselves acquainted with each other now. We didn't get to talk much before we uh, came on the air with the first segment. But we brought uh, Diana, Ashley, and Cynthia all back. And what I like to do with the panel discussion is it's great to talk about our individual businesses, the individual things that we're working on. But I like to also try to find some themes between our guests and figure out, uh, you know, figure out some, some of those lessons that you all have to help our viewers be successful and to take those lessons and apply them in their own lives. So it can be difficult to find themes. It wasn't too hard for you guys. Last month was a little harder trying to find themes between the, between the guests. But you're all really in the business of helping people with significant and complex events in their lives. Um, that requires helping people to set goals. Um, and that's not something people always want help with, right? So, Diana, how do you help people? How do you help the young women, the young mothers that you're helping with the foundation? How do you help them set goals? For me, it's really meeting and, them. And to follow through on them, because yeah. that's really important. You're like, we can set all the goals we want, but if we're not going to follow through, it doesn't really matter, right? right? Yeah. I think for me, it's meeting them where they're at, as in their motherhood. Um, if they're uncomfortable, or say, I guess, for example, if they are like my kid won't sleep, right? I will introduce a whole bunch of options. You know, try this, try this. I also introduce things that I've tried with my kid. Um, and really having them feel like what's what's comfortable with them because it's their kid and they're already so overwhelmed with everyone's, you should try this and mm -hmm. you should do this. And mm -hmm. I really just bring out the table before them and like, Let's you know. Let's try this together. Yeah, the word the word should can be really dangerous. It's a word. It's a word I'm trying to remove from my vocabulary, and I'm not always successful with that. But the word should, and a lot of people, a lot of our friends and family are really well meaning, but the word should comes out a lot. Yeah. So yeah. It's, a, it's a hard word to get out to. I struggle too. But um, and then as for follow up, I always keep a relationship with my moms. You know, I mm -hmm. get, send them to my group, and sometimes they even Facebook. You know. Friend requests me, and we catch up on text message. Like they're they're a part of my family now. Um, and if they ever feel like they're trapped somewhere, they come to me and either come to my support group online, mm -hmm. or they text me like, you know, I'm really struggling in this area. Can you help me? So, that's that's cool. Really so really, really just making yourself available and giving them some options, <laughs> letting them make choices is one of your approaches to helping them follow through on the very important goal of raising their children, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, Ashley, how about you? How do you help your students, and how do you help the parents? Because I'm interested in that side of the equation as well. Um, so, definitely, goals need to be, and like, as a teacher, like, we would always have goal setting with students, and so goals need to be specific, and they need to be measurable, especially when you're talking about your education, you know, so we want to make sure that we have specific goals that they can then achieve, right, so that they're, and they're measurable in the sense that what does that mean that we've achieved that goal? Um, so we want to sit down with the student and the parent together and make sure that their goals are aligned, because that's a really big thing, like we had talked about in our segment, um, that sometimes the student's goal for their life is a little different from what the parents perceive Absolutely, for their right? child, right? And so we want to make sure that the goals are aligned, because that will make for a much um, easier progression um, to really move towards those goals and achieving those goals. Um, so really talking to them and getting on the same page um, and making sure that the student is aware of what steps are required. Because you can set all of the goals in the world, but you want to make sure that they're they're measurable in the sense that, okay, this is what I need you to achieve this year, this is what I need you to do next year, this is what I need you to do throughout high school, and this is where you need to be you know, five years, ten years down the road. So making sure that we have all of that together um, is important and that they're aligned is important. Okay, cool. Cynthia, how do you help your clients? Your, your world is a little bit different, right? right? But right. they still need to have goals as well. Right. Um, how do you approach that with one of your, your bookkeeping or accounting clients, especially if you're doing that, that virtual CFO kind of stuff? Sure. Well, um, it depends on what the goal is in mind. Mm -hmm. If it's accounting, then I can I obviously can um, lay out a plan for them to help them get in line with exactly where they need to be. That's, that's pretty basic, you know, mm -hmm. as far as, you know, you need a one plus one should equal two. Yeah, but, you um, can't hope, right? <laughs> When it comes to um, actually setting goals for the future, for the expansion of their business, et cetera, um, I, I connect them with people who can help them with their vision, who can help them, because I do accounting. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't do the business planning for mm -hmm. them. I, I, um, I don't do their business consulting, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, so I connect them with people who have the expertise to help them. I think one of the most dangerous things to do is to lead on or to pretend or to fool yourself into thinking that 
you are a one-man show and that you can do everything. I think people can mm -hmm. get hurt in the long run if you don't look for other people with that yeah. different expertise. Yeah, everybody needs a team around them, even if it's, right. even if it's just your, your personal support network. Uh, exactly. It's, it's the very rare person I found who can do it all themselves. And there are right. some, but uh, that brings me to what you brought up is that, you know, sometimes we're not in the right role to figure out what the goal should be for someone. I, as, as a right. business coach, as a business consultant, this is something I, I find I have to be really careful of, is I, I try not to lead the witness, right, into what I think their goal should be. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably something that you actually probably see a lot or probably have to be very careful of. Yeah. When you get to know a student, you see their potential. How do you help them set a goal without leading the witness? That is, it's such a, like, a careful balance, too, because, you know, fortunately, we have scientific objective data that we can base on like hey this is stuff that you know you're interested in but you're also really good at this right and this is something to think about but yeah it's definitely difficult because if I see and, and as a teacher too like when I see potential I really try to encourage that potential but it may not necessarily be something that the student really wants to do right it may not be something they're passionate about so yeah it's trying to be objective and trying to ask questions um, where I'm trying to remain as objective as possible right so what makes you interested in that what do you where do you see yourself mm -hmm. right how are you gonna make that happen um, and then why like what is your major why question and that's one of the things that I'm constantly talking to my clients about with their supplemental essays, their common app essay um, for colleges is what's your why? Like why? Why are why do you want to do this? Why do you care? Why is this your passion? Why are you interested in this? Um, and what's your why? Is how does how does that why translate into a purpose? I bet that's that? something you have to work with the parents a lot too, because I bet the parents are doing a lot of leading the witness with the kid. Well, yeah, because and, and here's the thing, and parents, and this is absolutely important, but they're most of the parents I talk to are concerned about salaries. That's their main goal. Mm -hmm. Students are completely not because they've always you know up to that point they've been taken care of by their parents. Their mm -hmm. parents have paid the bills, bought the groceries, bought the clothes, right? And so. That has been the parents concerned about money. Is my student going to make money with this degree? Right, and because the student has right. to take care of the parents eventually. It's a, <laughs> it's a very real concern. Yeah, it is. And no, but it is, and it's a concern for the parent because they want their their student to be able to lead their best life. And ultimately, money is what makes the world go round. And so they want to make sure that their student is going to be well taken care of, and that they you know they can eat, um, and that they're not going to be you know housing them at thirty five. And so <laughs> that's, that's a concern. Looking at you, millennials. <laughs> And I can tell you, like, I was very big on, like, making sure I moved out of my parents' house, but some aren't, you know? So, yeah, yeah. so. some don't even want to drive. <laughs> It's true. It's actually, so true. I actually read a really, a really fascinating article in Forbes today uh, about millennials, and now that a lot of the data's in, um, millennial behavior does not appear to be that much different in the workplace or, um, you know, off by a couple of percentage points from the Gen Xers and the Baby Boomers, but really not all that different. So mm -hmm. so send your, send your cards and letters to WCOBM about how I'm wrong about that. <laughs> Before we go, I'd like, um, we are at the end of the year. What is something that each of you want to accomplish coming up in 2019? And what have you already done to get started on it? Because I think that's really important. Well, for me, it's to come out as a motivational speaker and you know talk more about my story, uh, share my story out. And what I've done before the year started is brought back my podcast. Um, mm -hmm. It's been quiet for about a year because motherhood and entrepreneurship. Um, but I really just... I felt like my, my voice has been, you know, kind of hiding and I'm coming out there more and just sharing and sharing in a way of how I healed because I've been afraid to do that. Um, All right. Yeah. Well, if you have an organization, you're looking for an inspirational speaker and an inspirational story, contact <laughs> Diana. So. Yeah. So how about you, Ashley? So I think my goal this year, um, so I work with at-risk youth as well. So I don't just work with, you know, parents and students that, that want, you know, the, the service for their child. But I also work with students that, that really need help, uh, that need our service, um, that really don't even know what opportunities are out there for them. And so my goal is to really reach out to more businesses and try to get sponsorship um, for these students. Okay. So. Yeah. Awesome. Cynthia, something you want to do in 2019, and what have you done to get started? Well, I mean, my business is so green. Um, I have so many goals. <laughs> um, I want to obviously expand my clientele. Um, want to? I would like to finish my CPA license. Mm -hmm. I'm already uh, halfway there as far as taking the exam. So. And I know you've been doing a ton of studying for that. So. I have. I have. It's been ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but when I get a passing score, I, get, I can't believe it. So. Yeah, it'll be worth it. <laughs> so I'd like to finish my CPA. I think I'm on track for finishing that this year. Um, 
and then other than that, just growing my clientele. All right, great. Yeah. Well, we are out of time. So before we go, I'd like each of you to tell the audience one more time, and you for the first time. So we'll, <laughs> so we'll start with you so I don't forget how they can reach you. I think the best way to uh, reach me, if you go to my website, cjnutteraccounting.com, uh, you can reach me there either directly through the website, you can get my phone number there, or you can get my email, you can find the link to my my Gmail, you can find the link to my Facebook. Uh, basically, that's a one-stop shop for any way to get a hold of me. So cjnutteraccounting.com. Right. Uh, so myeducationconnections.com. Um, it has all of my social media links as well as my email and um, uh, phone number to get a hold of me as well. All right. So you can always find me at um, alwayswithme.org for the nonprofit things. And then if you're looking for a podcast, podcast manager, it's collinsmediaproduction.com. And your podcast? Oh yes, it's on it's on Spotify, iTunes, and Stitcher, and you can search just search "Always with Me." Okay, so it's in all the normal podcast places. You guys are smart; you'll figure it out. <laughs> so, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank, for having us. thank you for being here and joining us. I know it's the holidays, and you probably are recovering from all the Christmas food and uh, whatever. No matter what holiday you celebrate, you're recovering from the holidays. So, thank you for being here with us today. I'm Jason Leduc. Join us for the fourth Friday of January. I never know what the date is. I really should look at a calendar before I come in here. But join us in about a month. We're going to have a whole new set of guests and have a great panel discussion as well. Uh, we will see you, and Happy New Year.